friends this video on mechanical properties of fluids part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com no more fear from exam please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to 4 before going ahead with part 5 now as i told you in this slide we will study how does pressure vary with depth i told you in the previous slide right that when we talk of height there is a variation of pressure with height so here we will study how does pressure vary with difference in height let us consider just to understand the basic fact let us consider or we are assuming here that we have some cylindrical object inside a fluid so for this particular object let us say that we will consider two different position one position would be this position 1 and the other one is this that is position 2 so let us try to see how this pressure vary with depth in this case as we already as i already told you that here will be we will be studying about fluids at rest since this fluid is not moving so there is no horizontal motion that is along the horizontal direction the net force is equal to zero so along the horizontal direction the net force is equal to zero now what about the vertical direction let us look at the vertical direction in this vertical direction suppose we define two positions one is position 1 and the other one is position 2 so what do we see here in the along the vertical direction the force at position 1 will be equal to pressure at position 1 into area this area is the cross sectional area now what will be the direction of this force this force will be perpendicular to the cross sectional area that means this force is perpendicular to cross sectional area a so that means that is the cross sectional area so let us suppose this force f1 is somewhat in this direction right so this is perpendicular to the cross sectional area similarly at position 2 we can say that f2 is nothing but p2 into area so here again we say let let us suppose this is f2 so what do we say that what is the total force that is f net f net would be nothing but minus f1 plus f2 why so because f1 is acting along the negative y axis so we have taken it as negative whereas f2 is acting along the positive y axis so we have taken it as positive so this we can write it as P two minus P one into area. So this is the net force. Now this net force will be balanced by the weight of this cylinder. Now we have considered this cylinder. Let us suppose this cylinder has some mass, say m. Say m is the mass of this cylinder. Therefore. this net force because let we are considering that if this is in equilibrium under equilibrium condition the, this net force will be equal to mass into acceleration that is the weight of the cylinder now this weight of the cylinder will be equal to nothing but the weight of the fluid displaced so the weight of the cylinder this is basically the weight of cylinder now this weight of the cylinder will be equal to the weight of fluid displaced so what is the weight of the fluid displaced so in that case we can write down this mass is nothing but density into volume because we know that density is equal to mass into mass by volume so we can say density that is rho into volume of the water displaced into g now what will be this volume this volume will be nothing but height that is height of the cylinder into the area that is the cross sectional area of the cylinder into g because volume is nothing but what is volume volume is nothing but height 
into area. So we can say P2 minus P1 into A is equal to rho into H into A into G. So this A and A will get cancelled. So we get P2 minus P1 is equal to rho H G. That means the difference in pressure that is the pressure at level 1 and the pressure at level 2 are different and they this difference is dependent on the height of the cylinder that means with height the value of pressure changes now if shifted if you consider the top of the fluid top of the cylinder rather if you consider the top of the cylinder and if it is exposed to air then the value of P1 would be nothing but the atmospheric pressure that is Pa. So in that case we can say that P2 is equal to Pa plus rho G H. That means this P2 represents pressure at any point at a depth H. So pressure at any point is nothing but the atmospheric pressure plus H rho G. That means the pressure at any point at a depth of at any depth from the sea level is greater than the atmospheric pressure by the quantity rho g h. So here we understood that how the value of pressure depends on how the value of pressure changes with depth. So what is the conclusion? It says that the pressure P at a depth below the surface of a liquid open to the atmosphere is greater than atmospheric pressure by an amount rho g h. Right? So now let us go ahead and look at concepts which are related to this. The next conclusion is pressure is independent of the cross-sectional or base area or the shape of the con container. You can see here that pressure is dependent only on this quantity that is rho g h where rho is the density g is the acceleration due to gravity which are both constants and h is the height or the depth at which we are measuring pressure so we can say that pressure is not dependent on cross sectional area or base area or the shape of the container thank you please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos Try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.